What's up everybody, welcome to part 12 of my How to Make a Pokemon tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at picking starter Pokemon. There are two ways to do it. The first way we are going to look at is the standard and most basic way, which requires uh, event editing and setting switches. And the second way we're going to look at is a custom script, and I'll get to that after we look at the first way. So, it's actually super easy to do the first way. Um, what you can do if you want is go to the Pokemon lab that's already been created and like look at how they do their Pokeballs. I copied one of them and pasted them into our Pokemon lab in our town. So here's our town, then here's the lab for our professor, and here's one of the Pokeballs right now. So let's take a look at this event and break it down. Um, okay, so the first page, like we talked about in the events episode, is really basic there's the pokeball here there's all the conditions they're empty like this is the one that always happens like by default when you interact with this pokeball it'll just say hey this is a there's a pokemon in the ball it won't do anything but if the switch choosing starters is on then he'll say hey do you want squirtle then it'll show choices and if you choose yes it'll add squirtle to your team with the script pb add pokemon like we talked about before uh-huh and then it will say choosing starter is off so that way this won't happen anymore. It'll set the starter choice equal to three because it's good to keep track of what starter you chose at the beginning of the game so that way your rival and you know. And then it'll set self switch A on. When self switch, way, self switch A is on, then the Pokeball disappears because you've taken it. So that's super basic, right? So one thing that happened, choosing starter is never set to be on though, right? So let's make another event. Let's make an event right now where auto run the very first time you enter professor oak's lab this will happen it'll show text and say welcome to my lab pick a starter okay and then it will set the move root of the player up then all right and then up okay and then it will uh, let's see, wait for moves completion, and then it will also control switch, it'll, tss, it'll, tss, there it is, okay. So choosing starter is, um, is a default switch that the game uses, and we can just use it right here, so choosing starter on. You could do this with any switch you want, you don't have to do choosing starter, if you want you could like make your own switch and be like, oh, if pick starter, you know, like it's just easier to use some of the switches that have already been made, but the logic is all there, I hope you... I hope you get that. Okay. And then this, we only want this to play once, so afterwards it'll do control self switch A on. Cool. New event page, when self switch A is on, nothing happens. Alright, cool. And now let's do this. Let's put an event here that will only be active. Actually, I like using uh, conditional branches more. So if choosing starter is on, then whenever you step on this tile, I need to make it player touch. Whenever you step on this tile, it'll say, uh, Hey, you need to pick a starter. What the hell? Okay. And then it will set move root player move up. Cool. So, let's test it. I think right now, <clears throat> the way it'll work is you can only choose Squirtle. But, hey baby steps. So you walk in, it'll auto run that first event. Welcome to my lab, pick a starter. You move up, right up. Cool. Now if I try to leave, it'll say, hey, you need to pick a starter. Cool. So that's our, that's all been taken care of. It's so easy. I love it. Conditional branches, switches. Mm. Ooh. Okay. And then I go interact with the Pokeball. It'll say, hey, you want Squirtle, the water Pokemon? I say no. Okay, choose carefully. If I choose yes, it'll add Squirtle to my team using the uh, the script that we talked about. I'll name the Squirtle. Ah! All A's. Cool. Now I have Squirtle. He's level 5. Nice. So, let's close this. Um, so, so let's see. That is starter choice 3. So if you want, you can make you can just do this. Copy paste. Do so you want Squirtle. Let's make this Charmander. The fire Pokemon like all this stuff is like super easy right like this this stuff is simple Charmander 
And you can you can make these whatever you want. If you don't want to do Squirtle, Bulbasaur, Charmander. So, since I chose Charmander, instead of setting ch starter choice to 2, I set it... I mean, instead of setting it to 3, I set it to 2. So that way, if I choose Squirtle, the variable starter choice will be set to 3. If I choose Charmander, the variable starter choice will be set to 2. So if I choose Bulbasaur, it'll be set to 1. You know. So, <clears throat> let me just do this real fast. Um, let's not make it Bulbasaur, though, for the last one. Let's make it something... I could, I could do Rowlet because I added that into the game in the last episode, but <clears throat> I think I'll just do uh, Snivy. I think I have Snivy. This is black and white. And uh, yeah, the formatting is going to be absolutely terrible on these uh, for the dialogue. But you know, this is just to prove prove a point. It's an example. But yeah, I can make the Snivy level twenty if I want. You wanna you want a Charmander at level five or a Snivy at level twenty to pick to start your game? Take your pick. Whatever. Ah, uh, never mind. I'll set it back to five. <laughs> that'd be pretty stupid. No, that'd be extremely stupid. Okay. So yeah, let's run through the logic one more time, show it off, and then move on to the script example. So, by default, if choosing starter is not on, and if the self switch of this is not on, by default, it'll just say, hey, this ball contains a Pokemon caught by the professor. Cool. If choosing starter is on, which we set as on, the very like the very first second you walk into the lab, it, sh it turns choosing starter on. If choosing starter is on, then he'll say, hey, do you want Snivy, or do you want Bulbasaur, or do you want Squirtle, Charmander, blah, blah, blah. Um, then it'll show choices. If you choose yes, it'll add it to your team. It'll set choosing starter off. If you have to do this, otherwise you can just keep getting Pokemon, you know. Oh, I want Squirtle and Charmander. Um, and then you set the starter choice to make it easier to keep track of what starter you chose throughout the game. So later, when your rival battles you, you'll be like, hey, if starter choice is one, make the rival's team this. If starter choice is two, then he'll throw out this, you know. Um, and then control self switch A on to make the Pokeball disappear. And if you choose no, he'll say choose carefully, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, and then when self switch A is, is on, the Pokeball disappears. Cool. So let's run through this one more time, and then let's look at the next way we can do we can do this. Excuse me. Okay, load in. Cool. Go into it. And now auto run. It auto runs. Welcome to my lab. Pick a starter, and then it sets choosing starter to on, and then it sets the self switch for the auto run event to on. So that way the auto run event doesn't keep playing. And then if I try to leave, he'll say, "Hey, you need to pick a starter." Okay, I choose Snivy. Cool. Now I can leave because choosing starter is now set to off. Cool. And now let's take a look at the Snivy on my team. Hey, there he is. What a nice little guy. Okay. So, you can... Oh, wait, let me... See, look. I also made it so you can't pick another Pokemon again by choosing... By setting choosing starter off. Cool. So, you can go further in depth with that if you want. You can make it so that way after you pick a Pokemon... After you pick a Pokemon, he says, like, hey, you picked that Pokemon, or... I think you'd have to put it here, actually. And then he'll, like, talk to you and move you or whatever. But, um, yeah, so this is the most basic example of picking and getting starter Pokemon. So now let's look... <coughs> oh my gosh. Now let's look at the second way that you can do this. And this is by using a cool custom script by the user Shiny570 on RelicCastle.com. Um, so he has a script where it actually makes, like, a little cutscene similar to, uh you know, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, or I think this might even be in black and white, where the Pokeballs are there on the screen in front of you, and you can select one and pick them. So it's super easy to install, and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So he has specific sprites that you have to download and put into your game, and uh, you really just put them... I think you put them in the, the art folder. Let me go take a look. It was graphics, and I believe characters. Actually, no, I think it was graphics pictures. Yeah, there it is. So you have like ball1.png, ball2, and like the ones for your starters. If you change the starter Pokemon that it gives you... Actually, no, I think it... I don't think you need to do that. Cool, I think all you need to do is get these Pokeball pictures, which you can get from downloading on this website. Oh no, I'm accidentally running a program. Go away. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so hit the entire script is right here. You can just click drag scroll to copy it all oh god I, I don't want to scroll down that far okay so scroll it all the way down and copy it all 
And once you have it all copied, you can go into your game, into the script editor. And um, so scroll down to the very bottom of this bar. Whoop. And there's main. And uh, in a previous episode, we installed the script follow Pokemon. You're going to do basically the same thing where you can just right click and insert a script. But uh, let me just delete that real quick. I already did right click insert. You may have to make sure that it's above main and below compiler. So right about here. And then you just paste it all in and here it all is. You can edit some of this. Like, for example, if you're using a different script called Elite Battle, which is really cool, and I'll talk about that in the future, not in this episode, but, um, if you're using Elite Battle, set it to true, otherwise, if you're not, set it to false. Uh, you can set the level of the starter Pokemon that you want, you can set the different, like, you can set varying heights, you can just modify values in here, uh, to make it so that way the sprites will appear higher or lower, but, um, then, it's super simple, then, once you've installed the script, all you need to do is make an event and call this script command Pokemon Starter Selection dot new and then parentheses and then the ID of the first Pokemon, the ID of the second Pokemon, and the ID of the third Pokemon. So Bulbasaur one, you know, Charmander four, Squirtle seven. If I want, I could make this like twelve and forty and 176. Let's see what those Pokemon are. Um, the script might be messed up now if I do that. Let's try it though. Let's take a look and see what happens when we use our script. It might be, there might be a formatting issue. I hope there isn't. There is a formatting issue. Okay. So the issue here was I didn't put it all. I messed up the way the line I believe if you just do parentheses, then enter, I think if this is like that, I believe that'll work. Let's try this. And if this doesn't work, then I'll just go with easier numbers. Okay, it works. Right on. So you can see here the script is in action. I can choose 176 as Togedic, or Togedic, okay. Wigglytuff or Butterfree and it shows you the types and everything it's pretty snazzy so I want Butterfree after I choose it it'll do that and then it'll disappear and then it'll be on my team and I believe it also sets the uh, switch or the uh, variable for the starter chosen I believe it does starter choice one yeah cool so I chose the first one option one and uh, it changes that variable as well. So it keeps track of that for you, which is pretty great. So let's do that again with Pokemon that aren't really stupid. <laughs> let's just do 1, 4, and 7 again uh, for a super basic example. Okay. 1, 4, 7. Cool. So Pokemon Starter Selection dot new 1, 4, 7. Cool. And uh, if, if it wasn't clear before, if you want to add a script command, go to the event commands and page three in the bottom right script, and then you can enter the scripts there. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's do this. Cool, save and play. Right on, go into the game. There's our guy. Hey, pick a starter. All right, one, Bulbasaur. Two, Charmander. Three, Squirtle. So yeah, once again, shout outs to Shiny570 for this awesome script. If you want to use it, download it um, from relictcastle.com. I will leave a link in the description. But yeah, this is, this is just another way to do it. You don't have to do it this way, you can do it any way you want. But yeah, hopefully this episode helped you um, picking starter Pokemon. I've got a lot of stuff I need to cover in the future episodes. Uh, the next episode, I'm going to be talking about the town map and uh, how to make your own and customize it and change it. It's pretty cool. Um, and I think I'll also talk about flying in that episode. I also got to talk about gyms. I got to talk about making items. I got a, like, I got a list over here I'm looking at. Um, but yeah, until next time, guys, I'll see ya. Uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter and Twitch. I'm going to be streaming more very soon. That's a promise. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you there. And I hope to see you here uh, next time. And I'll see you next time. Bye.